Spoiler warning, cause duh. Japan had seven years to cook, and dear lord did they cook. Godzilla Minus One is the new Japanese Godzilla movie, seven years after their latest live-action installment, Shin Gojira, which was also my first ever Godzilla movie that I only ended up watching for the second episode of Disagree. And I almost went into this movie without ever seeing the original because I thought that would be funny. <laughs> But I decided not to, so two days before seeing Minus One, I sat down and watched the original 1954 movie. And then ended up watching Return of Godzilla the day after, solely because that poster is really cool. Oh, and then I watched a bit of Terror of Mecha Godzilla, and the best part of that was the opening credits. So when it comes to Godzilla movies under my belt, I don't have a lot. And in general, I never really cared about the character until like maybe a year ago. And if anything, I thought and cared more about Godzilla in the last three days than I have in my entire life. I mean, Jesus Christ, the original 54 movie has made me rethink how I score movies. How the fuck is Godzilla, of all things, making me rethink my scoring system? I say all this to set up the context that I went into Minus One honestly thinking I was just gonna like it. In the same way that I like Shin Gojira, in the same way that I like the original. Big Lizard Go Smash, that make me happy. Everything else, eh, it's alright. Really end up having genuine enjoyment when watching the film only when Godzilla's on screen destroying shit. That's what I thought I was gonna feel. I thought I was gonna walk out of this movie being like, eh, Godzilla was cool, 7 out of 10. So when I tell you this might be one of my favorite movies of this year? <laughs> also, apologies if I butcher any of the names, uh, I'm gonna try my best. Minus One takes place throughout a few years following World War II, with our main character, Koishi Shikisama, being a failed kamikaze pilot, spending the entire movie avoiding death and feeling guilty about it. Already, I'm loving our main character, and honestly, I think this movie might have my favorite human characters out of the four. In the original, the only character that I really genuinely liked was the professor, because he was a fucking mood. And I did like the scientist's sacrifice at the end of the movie, but that was about it. I wasn't that drawn into the subplot of the daughter being engaged to the scientist, but having an affair with a guy who thought the best way to get on her dad's good side was to tell him that he wants Godzilla dead, even though the dad's a zoologist and doesn't want Godzilla to die. I, what a fucking stupid man. Shin Gojira's main memorable character was the Japanese government, so there's not much to really latch onto there. And my favorite character from Return of Godzilla and the only one I cared about was the hobo. But Minus One gives us a failed kamikaze pilot, which already on the basis of that is enough to make an interesting character given Japan's culture. But on top of that, man has PTSD mostly from seeing Godzilla. I really loved all the moments where he managed to avoid death, but at the cost of the ones around him, and it breaks him so much that he's sometimes convinced that he just has to be dead and nothing is real. It's fucking heartbreaking. Which is why when Nodika gets killed, pushing him out of the way from the blast and sacrificing herself, my heart fucking dropped. Like, come on, man. Hasn't he had enough? He already feels responsible for the death of all the mechanics on Odo Island, was blamed for the deaths during the bombing of Tokyo because of his failure at being a kamikaze pilot, which also the bombing of Tokyo caused his parents to die, which if I understand the dialogue correctly were the ones to tell him to come back alive, and now this woman that he's raised a child with during the post-war years and has finally started having feelings for and caring for her fucking dies. Like, come on. I just felt so bad for him because he was already suffering so much from survivor's guilt and it just kept feeling like it was getting added on more and more. I haven't seen character torture like this since I saw what Otto did to poor Gojira. He was frozen but still in pain. He just has to stand there as a statue while continuing to suffer. What the hell, Otto? Anyways, I got a little distracted. Point is, I like the main character a lot. But it's not only the main character I like, I like a lot of these humans. The captain especially is a character I loved, mostly for his own grievances towards his country. I hate my own government, so when I see characters or other people hate their own government, all I can feel is just mood, valid, go off, king. Seriously, I thought you hate government orders with a passion is a very funny line to me. <laughs> And the overall anti-war theme really elevates my enjoyment a lot. Some of the highlights from this movie isn't even the Godzilla scenes, which we will talk about, don't worry. But are moments like Shikishima's reaction to Mizushima saying, I wish the war was longer. Or later on, the captain telling Mizushima not being in war is something to be proud of. Or even that scene during the private meeting when one of the vets asks if going against Godzilla is certain death, and when the reply is no, he basically says that it can't be worse than war. 
As a woke, libtard, government-hating American, I have a lot of negative thoughts about the military, more specifically the higher-up government side of things. So watching a Godzilla movie and Navy vets just casually criticizing the government and war brings a lot of entertainment for me. How the fuck the anti-SJWs are saying this movie destroys woke Hollywood is goddamn beyond me. No one can be this dumb. I hate it so much. All right, enough of politics, because it's not like Godzilla's inherently political or anything. Let's talk about the big lizard himself. Oh my god, is he amazing. I think this might be the most Godzilla I've seen in a Godzilla movie, and every single scene that he's in doesn't waste a single moment of time. They all fucking slap. Him on Odo Island in the beginning, him destroying the Navy ships, him chasing after our main characters, him destroying Ginza, they are all fucking great. It is so much fun watching Godzilla destroy shit in this movie, and his damage is possibly the biggest I've ever seen. To be fair, I've only seen four movies. <laughs> During the scene where he's destroying Ginza and his steps just elevate the road, causing anything and everything onto it to go flying, I can't even find the word to explain it other than gnarly, which I literally never use that word ever. Just everything that Godzilla does feels so massive, and it's so enjoyable. What's also really enjoyable and what makes me really glad that I saw this in theaters is hearing his roar. Hearing that iconic roar through the cinema speakers rather than my soundbar, no shit, made me have a smile that I haven't felt since I saw Batman 22 for the first time. And if you know anything about me or this channel, that is a fucking high ass praise. And being someone who hasn't seen much Godzilla movies, I wasn't aware that this theme has played in pretty much every Toho movie, nor could I remember it being in Shin Gojira, so I wasn't really expecting it to be in here. So when that third act fight with Godzilla hit and I heard that iconic theme that I just heard for the first time three days ago, I genuinely did the Leonardo DiCaprio pointing and felt very hyped. God, I wish no one was sitting behind me. <laughs> I also loved how they did his atomic breath in this, with the spikes popping out as it slowly charges and then absolutely annihilating anything and everything in its way. It also feels like it's forced out of him, with the way that the spikes all jam back in at once and then his breath just shoots out immediately after. Of course, I don't think a Godzilla is going to be in any more pain than what Anno did. Dear lord, Anno, do you like having your characters just suffer? I mean, of course you do. I've seen Evangelion. <laughs> Going back to the main character and how his story ends, I kind of knew that the mechanic had installed an injector seat, given how one was mentioned in the doc speech in the previous scene, and they also showed the mechanic showing Shikisama one more thing about the fighter jet. But given Noriko's death and Shikisama's constant struggle with survivor's guilt throughout this entire movie, I wasn't 100% sure he was going to use it. I was still open to this movie fully committing to him fulfilling his kamikaze orders, and during that moment of absolute silence, my theater was so deadly silent that I could hear myself breathing. So I held my breath just so all I could hear was dead silence. And then he survived. And then this movie throws the emotional gut punch of Shikisama being handed the note, and my immediate thought was, is she? Is she alive? And then she was. Noriko somehow survived, and I was tearing up. See, this is how you pull off the character isn't actually dead twist and still make it work. Because I was so genuinely connected to Shikisama and his relationship to Noriko, that when it was revealed that she was alive and Shikisama falling to his knees, sobbing in happiness, it filled me with an overwhelming amount of wholesomeness and happiness for him. Like I said, her death was a heart drop because it felt like he couldn't win, that he kept missing death. Her being alive feels like a reward, the one bit of genuine happiness he could have in this whole movie. And it also made you wait until the very end, having the reveal in her line, is your war finally over, to be the final moments of the movie makes a hit even harder, to the point that I just got chills writing that quote, and I'm already feeling tears. This is how you make it work. You can't just kill off a classic beloved character in a fucking explosion and then have him reappear two scenes later, JJ! <sighs> <laughs> this movie also feels like the fastest Godzilla movie out of the four I've seen. I genuinely think the pacing is fucking perfect. It never skips a beat, there's never a dull moment, the movie just keeps going and going and going, and by the time we hit the third act, the big final battle with Godzilla, it felt like we got to that point so much quicker than any of the other movies I've seen, without sacrificing any bit of the pacing or enjoyment. 
None of this felt like a slog or too much shit going on. It manages to still feel balanced while moving through pretty quickly, and I loved it. I also love that we get to see Godzilla in the opening scene. Given how this is the 37th movie in a 70-year-old franchise, we don't really need to wait for Godzilla. We know him, we watch these movies for him, and this movie gives us him in the opening scene, but what's even better is he's not even at his full form when we first get to see him. He looks a little Jurassic Park-esque, but still a hell of a lot better than that fucking 98 design, which admittedly kinda threw me off at first, cause I was like, I'm pretty sure he looked a lot bigger and different in the promotional material, and then when we later see him attacking the ships at sea, he's a big boy and has his full design looking even more terrifying. I think that's about everything I have to say for this movie. And even though my thoughts alone have already filled up four pages of this script, they can only come from the perspective of a relatively new, insanely casual watcher. If you want to hear how this movie is from a massive fan of the Big Lizard himself, listen to the beauty. I have been a Godzilla fan for a good while now. It's not that I was a kid, I saw Tristo Godzilla, the movie from 1998. Yeah. You heard me right. The movie the Mod Godzilla fan hated was the introduction to the franchise for me. And let's be honest, it was for a lot of people around my age. Since a Hollywood movie usually get more traction when you use a Japanese Godzilla movie. What good? Kid me for the show. But all the me see it as an entertaining popcorn fritz. But not a Godzilla movie. But that debate for another time. Well, it's still going on after 25 years in Godzilla subreddit. Guys, let it go already. <laughs> For fans to see a matter of Monster Man at Godzilla phone, they call my attention to the other movies. I've seen Mod or Heise era and all of the Millennial era. I well at the original from 1954 with one of my all time favorite movies. I actually not seen more of the Showa era, except for the original and Mothra vs. Godzilla. I have also watched the anime trilogy, which while I appreciate it bold direction and creativity, I sadly wasn't a fan of. I did a podcast episode on this channel about Shin Godzilla, which was at the moment my second favorite Godzilla movie. Well, let me tell you that this movie might have taken the number two spot. Where do I even begin? This movie might be one of the only movies in the franchise that had recaptured the feeling of trick and tragedy with oppression in the original. It touched that theme like PTSD, grief, survival guilt, and satisfied, and that it beautifully. And I let mention the main character, Koshi Shitsima, feeling guilty and well at getting a lot of shit. Just by being alive made him shot a tracked, a sympathetic character. And the unofficial family made by him, Noriko Oishi, and this child, Akiko, are only yet adorable. I actually care about the main character in a Godzilla movie. Hell, I even cared about the side character. I wanted everyone to survive and turned out Tommy Pretzin, which by the way, you want to bet. Tommy Pretzin in the shave it. I was sad that I thought Oishi didn't make it. We'd maybe so happy to see her alive again at the end. Normally, I feel shit on when everyone survived in the movie. But I feel that in this movie, it just made the overall theme of shell preservation hit way stronger. I'm paraphrasing now, but one of the dialogues that hit me a lot was We are not going to die fighting. We are fighting to be alive. I get sealed yet by saying it. <laughs> I also liked how in the end of the movie, they kind of mirror the whole set of fight in the original, but doing it differently. Also about the ending. The underwater scene reminds me of an ending of another Godzilla movie. With that feed, most Godzilla fans will know exactly what I mean. But I'm not going to say more than that, because I want to get a lot into the franchise. The version of Godzilla I am only the most terrifying he had been. The child reminds me of a mix of Heisei and Mondowitz. It based on Godzilla the White, which was directed by the same director. I don't know how controversial this opinion will be, but it is really my favorite Godzilla design. 
yet in other suits, but it still looked real and badass. Something I love is that we got more seen with Godzilla in the water. With each zombie we had seen in a lot of movies. A lot of people have already pointed that out. It felt a lot like Steven Spielberg's yacht. Hmm, I wonder how he became a movie director again and got some inspiration for his movie. You can tell your son about it when he's born, Major Spielberg. Hmm, she and Godzilla on the pitch fin with the iconic theme just made me so damn excited. Though I had to say, and tell me if I'm wrong, but did they just play Morpha theme from Morpha vs. Godzilla during the city destruction? I'm kind of confused as to why. Don't get me wrong, it's a great song, but it may be a bit confused. Though it's not something that will bring my enjoyment down. Anyways, this is a brilliant Godzilla movie that I simply adore and might be the best movie of the year to me. It does leave the ending open for a sequel, but would also work great as a standalone. I will give the movie 10 gold blooms out of a possible 10 gold blooms. That's my highest rating. It's a great time to be a Godzilla fan. We just got some of the best Godzilla movies made by Toho and Monterworth Ego Retron, with Godzilla Ed Khan coming out next year and the Apple Plus show Monad being available on streaming right now. There have been your favorite Sweet Departed units. Now, time to let Alan be able to finish this video and say his final thought. Overall, if it wasn't for how iconic the original movie is, and how if it wasn't for that film, we wouldn't even have this to begin with, I'd almost say that this is my favorite Godzilla movie I've seen. Again, the only thing stopping me from saying that is how iconic the 54 version is, and I know I'm one to go against the grain on majority opinions, but this is not one that I want to. God, I would feel so disrespectful if I did. And besides, the 54 movie has that mountain scene that I still have no idea how they managed to pull that off, and that alone is enough for it to reign supreme for me. But regardless, I do agree with my Swedish counterpart that this is the second best Godzilla movie. It's got perfect pacing, beautiful storytelling, wonderful characters, and a glorious ending. I genuinely cannot think of a single complaint or negative that I have with this movie, nor a single time that my enjoyment was ever impacted. There's only one tiny thing that stood out to me, and that was the two separate characters in the same scene call it a heat wave? Um, actually, it's his atomic breath. <laughs> it's a damn near 10 gold blooms, but if I give it that, it would make no damn sense in the ranking. So... Everyone has their own opinion, but my opinion is the best opinion. I'm sure you figured that out already. Subscribe and please.